Uh, thank you, Chairperson. And maybe let me indicate from the very onset, uh, uh, Mr. Molife, about the importance of this particular session. If all what is being said outside there about uh, ESCOM, and in particular your name, I think you should take this particular session very serious to clear your name and that of the institution and other chief executives of the SOEs. You, you came from uh, Transnet before you were seconded to, 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 to ESCO. Did you have any knowledge of any of a service provider at Transnet who had anything to do or owned by the Gupta family? Because this will be seen as if we are beating about the bush, but the problem that we have in the country, there is a hypothetical view that says there is looting of state resources in the SOEs and in particular ESCOM and Transnet. So all these technical questions and all of them, they don't reach where people out there want questions from because anybody who is in there with, uh, with money or an indication that this one is thinking money, they'll say this one has a, a Gupta. Can you clarify this Gupta issue? At Transnet, I'm not aware that uh there had been any business between Transnet and Gupta-owned companies. Unless I'm making a mistake, but I'm sure Mr. Gama can confirm that. Uh, but I'm not aware that uh, there is any company that is owned by the Guptas that has done business with Transnet. At ESCOM there was. There they had been several coal supply agreements, uh, Brackfontein, uh, and then eventually they bought um, Optimum, um, uh, but even the Brackfontein contract and the other Gupta owned or Oak Bay and Tegeta contracts had been entered into prior to at least my arrival at the uh, ESCOM. So, um, so these were uh, coal supply contracts like uh, other coal supply contracts. If I were to ask, is there any knowledge that you have pertaining to any of the Guptas, that stops them to do business with government. Let's say here is this Atul or whoever, I don't know about them by their names, I thought by this time when you are coming here you will be coming maybe with one or two of them because I would ask them questions to say how did you come here, what is it that you are doing, are you legal here? So I want to establish that. Is there anything criminal to do business with a particular person of that nature? Is there anything that actually is there that says these companies are not supposed to be used in our supply chain? Mr. Gordon will correct me if I'm wrong, but in the PFMA it's very clear that um, a supplier who is unethical, does not behave properly, must be blacklisted after the, a process. So you have to go through a process and then notify them and then blacklist them. But they have a right to be heard before you blacklist them. I'm not aware that the Guptas or any of their companies have been blacklisted uh, or that they've been found guilty of a crime in South Africa. Uh, I know there's a lot of things that have happened, but um, if you're sitting there and you're objective, uh, um, they would have to be blacklisted before you can say to the CEO of um, um, the um, Honor Step Board Veterinary Services, you can't do business with the Guptas. He will ask you, so where's the blacklisting? And to, the, to my knowledge, it doesn't exist. There is Glencore, there is Anglo-American. Those are other big companies that we know of. 
with lengthy contracts with these SOEs, including including ESCOM, Glencore, for 25-year uh, contract. What what is what is the difference between these? Because there are these insinuations, or there are reports. Some of the witnesses were saying here, there is work that uh, these Gupta-related companies received payments without having any contract with with ESCOM. Uh, Mr. Luyange, um, I mean this is. Uh I think people are talking about state capture. But if you want to talk about capture properly, substantive capture, you have to go to all those power stations and the mines that are close to the power stations and the contracts between those mines and those power stations. Uh, the uh, cost plus mines, which were developed with ESCOM's money, so what happens is that you, as Mr. Luyenge, get the mining license to open a mine next to a power station. ESCOM gives you the money to sink the shaft. And then you get a 40-year contract to supply ESCOM. And the price is agreed to. In the case of Exaro, it was 1,132. In the case of uh, Optimum, which was a 25-year contract, it's not necessarily that that contract was bad. The problem with that contract was that the bulk of the supply uh, had been for export. So when the export coal price tanked, they then had problems. And then they wanted to recover from uh, ESCO, which we did not allow. By the way, Mr. Piers Marsden says in his testimony that I found amusing, he says he could not believe that anybody could talk like that to Glencoe in the way that I had spoken to Glencoe. So something somewhere we must have touched the raw nerve uh, a, and shaken a, a, a long existing relationship uh, that has to do with this. With this, uh, with this. I mean, if, if, if Mr. Luyenge, Parliament wants to um, understand state capture, I think with this, uh, optimum mine deal, you are scratching on the surface. You need to go deep into those 40-year contracts. I've seen them. They've specified even where black people must stay and white people must stay in the mine with ESCOM's money. And nobody wants a truth commission about that. Nobody wants to talk about that. Those contracts continue as they were drafted 40 years ago. And in fact, in the case of Glencore, they have the audacity to say, they want to change the price from 150 to 530 at an additional cost of 1.96 billion rand per annum, 6 billion rand over three years, that ESCOM didn't have. And then Mr. Marsden says he couldn't believe that anybody could talk to Glencore like that. I think, personally, I think that was my problem. The Mackenzie uh, is contemplating to pay back the 1.6 billion, which they term it to be dirty money, which was paid directly uh, by ESCO. What's your take on that? Well, I know that Ms. Daniels has said in public that the money must be paid back. I, do not, I have not examined her reasons, and I have not also examined the reasons why Mackenzie wants to pay back uh, that money. But I'm sure that uh, the chief financial officer will, uh, when he comes here, Mr. Singh, uh, give the details of that contract and explain what actually happened. For... I rest my case uh, in the interest of time and afford other members. Uh, <clears throat> if these matters, matters of this nature, where there is this perception of the looting of state resources uh, in, in relation to, 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 to ESCO, will you be shocked if there is anyone who will come with enough and sufficient evidence that says 
in one of the corners or in any of the corners, maybe include in, in, including the meetings that might be held at Saxon World, where there was ever a, a meeting that was a planning to, for, for certain people and organizations to loot state resources, would your name show amongst those that will come up? Will you be shocked if your name is there? No, I've never been in a meeting to discuss the looting of uh, state resources. I've never been in a meeting to discuss the looting of state resources uh, anyway. You have a problem. In fact, uh, Mr. Luyenge, if I can expatiate on that, this is a very strange thing. You know, when I arrived at ESCOM, we had a war room. Mr. Professor Eberhardt was here. I think he's left. Perhaps he didn't like what I was saying, but he's left. But what struck me about the war room, the problem that we had was load shedding. The problem that needed to be confronted head on was load shedding. The war room was shifting the deck chairs. Professor Everard was a member of the war room. To the point that we made presentations to the war room about how we think we can deal with this thing on Tetris, and, and how we think we can improve the operations of the company. And um, government decided the war room was no longer necessary because ESCOM has got this thing under control. When the war room shut down and uh, load shedding ended, some of the members of the war room say, this thing is ending because there must have been looting. So now looting becomes the issue, not load shedding. Nobody talks about, somebody said today load shedding cost 450 million rand per day. It cost billions of rand per day just to have load shedding. That ended. When that ended, I suppose another crisis had to be manufactured because that one was gone. And it's gone for good because those young engineers that are there, that are embedded at ESCOM, uh, now have a way of managing the electricity generating plants in such a way that uh, we have sufficient capacity to generate electricity every day. I still have four minutes, <laughs> uh, Lastly, Chairperson, uh, I, I want to maybe indicate the fact that here we are not investigating state capture. Here we are conducting our oversight. Whatever we found, whatever we find as something that is in breach of any law, we will tell Parliament and recommend to Parliament to go to where you say this is, the, this, this is the scratching of the surface. And maybe definitely the true investigative judicial commission of inquiry, the one that will, be, uh, that, that will be appointed by the president, will get into that. But as a, citizens of, uh, as a citizen of the country, you have a responsibility to give us evidence to that effect and then send that to, to, to parliament. If it does not get to where it's supposed to be, then you are engaged and more evidence and other people who might know of that particular fact, because here, we are not to, this is not a witch hunt. We want to get more, we are on a fact-finding mission about this corruption. Corruption is there, but we are not able to say this and that. This Gupta issue is actually a, a, an issue that must assist us. We must be told uh, 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 about the beneficiaries of the Gupta families to tell us how do they do that? Uh, is, is that wrong? No. Is there any breach of the law in doing that? Thank you. I will cooperate, sir.